Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. There was a, a woman inside wanting to know where to send her census information to, so we had to get her some information. Um, I want to start just by thanking everyone um, for being here again today and, and start this by offering my condolences to the family of the man uh, who passed away today from the coronavirus. Um, obviously, it's a very sad situation, and, and it's, it's quite honestly a reminder of what's at stake here. Uh, everything that we're doing and everything that we're asking people to do is to limit the number of individuals and families who suffer, uh, who, who are going to suffer and experience grief. Uh, and that's kind of um, a reminder for all of us today what we've been going through over the last two weeks here in, in Boston and Massachusetts and in the country. Uh, and we're going to continue to make sure that uh, we do everything we can to, to prevent the spread of the virus. Uh, I also want to uh, make a mention of the medical professionals who are working hard under very stressful conditions to save lives. Um, I spoke to the presidents of all the hospitals in Boston today. Uh, they need supplies. Uh, as we all know that um, Governor Baker was on a call yesterday with Washington trying to get supplies down from Washington. Uh, he's working with all of his uh, folks throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, I want to make an appeal today to all the building sites and construction companies and anyone who uses protective equipment. Uh, we're looking for masks and we're looking for respirators. Uh, many of the companies that do asbestos abatement, uh, that, that work on molds, that, that do um, general demolition, uh, you have those, that equipment. Some of it's on your shelves and we're asking you right now. The most important use for that equipment is to make sure that we get it in the hands of our medical professionals who are, who are saving lives here. Uh, if you would like to donate masks or respirators, we're asking you to call, uh, if you're in the city of Boston, we're asking you to call 311, uh, or if you're outside of Boston, you can call 617-635-4500. This is not for us to stockpile and have, this is for us to share, uh, not just with the Boston hospitals, but to pass along to the state and work across the board so everyone in the Commonwealth and, and the medical professionals have the equipment that they need. Um, our Office of Emergency Management uh, will get them to where they need to go. We also want to make sure that medical staff can work without problems. Uh, many, uh, many of our medical staff are concerned about public transportation uh, and having tr difficulty parking. So we reached out to commercial parking garages today. In response, about a dozen have agreed to reserve spaces and lower their rates for medical staff. Uh, I want to thank those garages for doing that. Um, and we're going to be looking for more spaces in and around hospitals so that uh, uh, folks have places to park. Um, also, uh, Blue Bikes are offering a free 30-day pass to all medical personnel in, all, um, in five cities and towns uh, around the Commonwealth. So we're asking uh, Blue Bikes, if, you, if you're a medical personnel you don't have a membership for the Blue Bike, uh, please sign up. It's free. Um, Blue Bikes offer that free today. The latest numbers that we have uh, of of coronavirus, you've been reporting it. It's nothing that you don't already know. But people watching this, we have 67 cases in the city of Boston. We have 328 statewide, um, and we're waiting for the updated numbers. We do not have them yet. And when we get them, we will get them out to the folks. Uh, we want to remind people about physical distance is the most effective way that we have to slow the spread to keep people healthy and preserve medical capacity. Uh, and what I mean by that is just making sure that um, you, you keep six feet apart from each other. Uh, we're asking people not to have house gatherings and parties. Um, it, as much as you can stay in and around your house is important. Uh, if you go for a walk, keep that distance, physical distance from people. Just, uh, you know, always be, be cognizant of that. I think by now most people aren't shaking hands, but remember about shaking hands and hugging right now is something that we're asking people not to do. Uh, it's something that's really important. We're still in, in the piece here where we're trying to prevent the spread from happening. Uh, we know that there, there are positives in Massachusetts, and we, we know that we have someone who lost their life today. Um, we know those positive cases are going to go up. The numbers are going to go up. Um, but what we want to do is, is try and have them have that one bump and, and then try and, and, and see if we can bend the curve here. Uh, we're not at the top of the curve yet, but we're asking people the best way to do that is social distancing. Also, uh, if you're caring for elderly people and not visiting people, I think you can check in with them by calling, by texting, FaceTiming, uh, using all of those tools so that there is some social interaction. But that social, so, social interaction uh, needs to be most of it through technology right now. So just keep that um, in your head if you can and, and maybe practice that in your homes. The Boston Resiliency Fund, um, in three days, we've, we've raised $16 million from 1,000 different donors. Uh, the money is, used for, for, is going to be used for organizations and provide, providers that provide food to kids, 
low-income families and seniors, child care for first responders and medical personnel. This is not an individual fund. This money is going to be used to make sure that we have enough food, that we can get that food out to different neighborhoods and different communities, and we want to make sure we get it out to the seniors as well. The Boston Public Schools last week um, and this week uh, have distributed over 50,000 meals. Uh, at, uh, excuse me, let me correct that. This week, since Tuesday, have distributed over 50,000 meals for more than 70 sites across the city. Uh, to find out your location, um, go to uh, boston.gov slash coronavirus. Uh, those are, that is a program that we started on Monday for our school age kids. We have put over 7,655 Chromebooks in students' hands, and there's more to go. Uh, we have our uh, volunteer teachers and our school leaders. I'd like to give a shout out to our school leaders uh, for the great work that they're doing and making sure that our kids get the, the tools they need uh, so we can have online learning with our kids. So far, the, the conversation has been very positive with that, uh, but we want to continue to make sure that we get as many Chromebooks, all the Chromebooks that we, we anticipate in the hands of our young people. Um, Student engagement is ramping up. Over 19,000 students were online using resources yesterday. So some of the Chromebooks that we don't have to deliver to families, they have their own uh, program, they have their own computers, so we've put the programs on there. So we see that as this uh, virus continues and as school, um, as we head into the second week of not having school, uh, by having 19,000 kids, and next week we'll have a lot more than that, we'll update you on the numbers. It's important to keep our, our young people engaged. Um, I also want to thank um, all of the volunteers and, 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 and uh, the teachers and, and the people that are coming to our, uh, our volunteer sites and the custodians who are helping us keep things clean. As, as a lot of industry gets shut down, uh, we have to continue to keep government moving forward, and there's a lot of uh, great frontline people that are helping us with this, so I want to thank them for that. City Hall service and staff, our plan for modified hours and working from home here at City Hall and throughout city buildings is in place. City Hall remains open for critical services. Uh, public safety, public health are priorities, uh, and the building is being continually cleaned. We're keeping the city running, but the public should avoid coming in if at all possible. Many, if not most of, all, most of our services are available online. We'd ask you to call 311 before you come in. Uh, even if you're looking to come in and pick up a birth certificate or something like that, call 311 so we can have it ready for you as we move forward here. Um, it, the best, that's the best thing to do because, it, again, it's for your own, public, your own safety by not having contact with people. Uh, offices without transaction windows are, appoint, are by appointment early, uh, by appointment only. So if, if you're a city employee and you're looking to retire, uh, you have to make an appointment. Other services that you want to have, you need to call and make an appointment to have it. If you, have any three, if you have any questions on anything uh, that I just talked about and you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, call 311 and we can make sure we get the proper information to you. Traffic and parking enforcement is still in place. Street cleaning is the exception. Uh, we begin street cleaning on the 1st of April. I think actually some trucks are out there now, but uh, we will not be ticketing and towing. Um, but we are, enforcing, um, we are enforcing traffic enforcement for several reasons. Uh, one is we're asking people not to park in handicapped locations, not to park in front of hydrants, not to park in front of crosswalks. Uh, we want to be able to make sure our, our city continues to, to be able to get people around it safely, and, and if they need those parking spaces, they're available. Uh, with less traffic, we are seeing reports of speed, car, uh, car speeding. Uh, we've come a long way on road safety in our city. We're focused on saving lives right now, so we're asking people, please obey the speed limit. Uh, I don't want to have to set up speed traps for people that should understand and obey the law. That's something that we don't need right now in the city of Boston. We need you all to work together. Uh, because you don't see people out on the street doesn't mean that it, it turns into a raceway. So we're asking people to please obey, the, obey the, speed, the, the speed limit and obey the laws out there. We have to help each other out here, and that's what, in the most parts of our city, that's what's happening, uh, and we need to do in that particular case. Uh, water and sewer. Uh, water and sewer shut off and late fees have been suspended. A reminder that our water is clean and safe to drink, so as people are thinking about buying water and stocking up on water, the water in your faucet is very safe to drink. We have the cleanest water in the country here in the United States, uh, so we want to make sure that you take, use that opportunity uh, if you need be um, to, when you go shopping, you, you don't have to necessarily buy water, but our water is safe. Our housing plans, we have agreements to halt eviction proceedings. We also have students and others looking for housing. We've heard concerns about apartments showing uh, violating physical distance guidelines. So we're asking all landlords, realtors, and brokers do not do in-person showing, especially for units that are currently occupied. 
So if you have families living in a unit and you want to show the unit, we're asking you not to do that. Uh, because again, it's about keeping that, that physical distance from each other uh, and preventing the spread of the virus. We're asking people to use videos and photos. Do not hold open houses for homes for sale. Uh, giving tenants as much notice as possible and for all the actions that you might want to do. Clean and disinfect spaces whenever you use them. The quicker and the more, the more that we adhere to the rules of social distancing, the quicker we'll get to the other side of this. And it's really important that, that we adhere to all of these, all of these suggestions. Uh, it's a situation that's very serious, and we want people to, to understand the seriousness of it. For people experiencing homelessness, we have zero plans to close our shelters. But we're going to continue putting in place measures to protect sheltered guests and prevent the spread of virus. The city is in the process right now of finalizing a comprehensive plan, and we're acting now on parts of that plan. We're erecting facilities for screening, testing, and isolation of patients next to the Southampton Street Shelter and Pine Street Inn. We're in close communication with our partners, and we're focused on keeping our homeless population safe. We want to make sure that every person is safe. So again, the rules are the same about, about, about physical distancing and doing everything we can to make sure we have physical distancing. For our seniors, our Raid Strong Commission is here for you. Staff is reaching out through our building and service providers, uh, phone calls in multiple languages. Uh, and, and as I said the other day, and a lot of people called, our Age Strong Commission is for, for all of our older residents in Boston. If you have any concerns or questions, just call 311 from your phone, and we will connect you to services and help you out. Um, we got a call the other day uh, from a woman uh, who was a Spanish speaker. Uh, we were able to help get translation, and she was looking to, to get connected. She didn't have any food in her house, and we were able to connect her to a program. So we're going to continue to do those services to let people know. We are also working with, to continue services like Meals on Wheels, and we're working on, we have a bunch of folks working on comprehensive plans for our seniors right now in the private buildings as well as the ones that are city owned, and also on folks that live in, in their own homes. So again, any questions, please call, please call 311. Uh, nurse, nursing homes and assisted living facilities are not allowing visitors, and we're asking you that you adhere to those rules. Uh, it's, it's for the safety of your loved one. It's for the safety in those facilities to make sure that they're safe. Food pantry sites are up and running. They're using a grab-and-go packaging system uh, with special precaution. Many grocery stores, I want to thank the grocery stores, I think there's six or seven now, too many to name, that have increased the hours in the morning for senior hours. I want to thank you for that. Many of your stations have covered that, and I appreciate that. Uh, and we, we encourage uh, our older residents, if you can, get up and, and go, go shopping early in the morning so you can try and avoid the crowds. Yesterday there was a lot of crowds, so the social distancing um, was in effect, but I don't how, know how successful it was. But as days go on, we, everyone doesn't have to go shopping tomorrow morning. We can spread out over the next several days. Um, if you have any issues with food or, medica or medication access issues, we're asking you again to call 311 so you can help. Uh, we can help you on a case-by-case -case basis, and we're also working on a larger scale plan. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, you can also, many people have their relationship with their own state representative or the state senator or the city councilor. Uh, if you have your relationship there and you want to call them as well, we are tied in together. We are one unit of people right now. Uh, so you can call anybody you feel comfortable with as far as elected officials, and we'll all make, we'll make sure that you, the service you get is the same as you would call 311. Uh, for anyone interacting with seniors, as I mentioned a little, a little while ago, we we're asking you to take precautions. We're asking you to wash with soap. We're asking you to sanitize. We're asking you to disinfect and keep your distance. And if that means putting signs up in your house or on the front door, I would do that as well. So people coming and visiting, they'll get a chance to see who's in the house. Uh, so there'll be an opportunity there for that. Uh, small businesses, we are concerned about our 40,000 small businesses. We're engaging them. Uh, we've been continuing to engage them since this began. Our small business team is out in the neighborhoods. We sent letters on safety guidelines in six different languages. We lifted up licensing regulations to allow takeout and delivery services. We've conducted a survey of over, over 1,100 businesses, and we're taking those surveys and that information that we're getting from them to see how we can further assist them. We are developing uh, resources. We're creating a guidebook for offering takeout and delivery. It's also for groceries, pharmacies, and other businesses. We also have one-on-one -on -one technical help to get businesses online. 
We're helping jobs, job seekers find work as drivers and shoppers. We're reaching out to companies that, that might need help in, in delivery. So we're reaching out so you can contact our Office of Economic Development and we will try and connect you uh, to some employment opportunities. I know many people in the restaurant business um, were working and not working now and they don't know what they're going to do. So there might be some opportunities. So I'd suggest you call us. We're also developing a new platform called Support Boston Restaurants. It's a directory for res re residents to know what is open and what businesses can share information on gift cards, etc. So one of the things that one of our businesses, if you want to get takeout, and many of these places are delivering, you can take takeout, they'll deliver to your house, and it's an opportunity for us to, to, for you to get something different, maybe to eat in the house, but it's an opportunity for us to help our businesses uh, to, to, to keep going, and that's something that, that's really important. We also have another survey on the way that's going to go out to businesses. The results will inform our ongoing response. For businesses that are watching and haven't been connected to the city, uh, and, and this is the first you're hearing of it, we're asking you to go to boston.gov slash small dash business. That's boston.gov slash small dash business. For general updates, uh, and if you could get a pen, uh, I just want to give you some general numbers and, 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 and websites. Uh, for general information, everything I talked about today, you can go to boston.gov slash coronavirus. That's boston.gov slash coronavirus. If you live in the city of Boston, you can call 311. If you're watching and you want to connect outside of Boston, the state number is 211. So the city of Boston is 311 and the state is 211. To get regular updates by text, you type in the word BOSS COVID, B O S. C O V I D, and you text it to 99411. That's Boss COVID. Text it to 99411. Please do not trust some of the things that you're seeing on social media. Uh, there's been rumors again today about a shutdown in the federal government and a shutdown in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, the governor spoke a couple hours ago. He's pretty clear that there's no shutdown happening in Massachusetts, uh, at least as of right now. Um, so I think that we need to make sure that information goes out not to set panic. We want everyone to make sure that we are reaching out to everyone, no matter who they are or what their access to technology is. So tomorrow, the city of Boston, along with elected officials and community organizations and community groups, are going to be gathering in different locations, fewer than 25 people in every location, and we're going to be doing a, a printed delivery, a printed information to homes across the city. We have about 1,000 volunteers who are signed up to deliver let, um, information in several different languages. Uh, this is the document. It's a, it's a seven pager. As you open it up, you go to different information languages that are inside. So we're going to have this done and, and dropped tomorrow. Um, we're going to be all over the city of Boston. We're going to adhere to physical distance and hygiene. So we're asking people um, just you have to sign up through the city. We don't want to have hundreds of people show up in locations. We are breaking the locations down. They're already broken down into sections, sections of the city, and we're limiting the number of people in those particular areas to be able to get this information out. Uh, lastly, I want you to just continue to keep practicing uh, physical distance and strict hygiene, washing your hands often with soap and water, using hand sanitizer. Physical distance is, is an opportunity for you to stay six feet away from somebody. Uh, I think it's important that we continue to say that. I'm watching people. Uh, for the most part, it's working. As I look out here, it's kind of working. I think mo it's not quite six feet across the board, but it will be in about two seconds, I think. Uh, and we're asking the same here for the press. Uh, we want to make as much space available for folks so that we can con continue doing that. I'm really insisting on no crowds or gatherings, six feet between people. Hand washing with soap and, soap and warm water, sanitizing, disinfecting your surfaces, not just your, your home surfaces, but doorknobs and car doors and things like that. We're asking people if you feel sick, isolate yourself, contact your, your doctor or 311 to help so we can help you with that. What we have the Mayor's Health Line through our Department of Public Health. We want you to continue to reach out to folks and to each other. Uh, I want to ask people um, in the recovery community uh, that we're listening today. Uh, reach out to somebody who might need to reach out to. Um, there, are, there are online meetings happening uh, through Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, but it's important for us to reach out to somebody who might need a phone call, so we're asking you to reach out. Let's stay strong in Boston and let's keep moving forward. Uh, with that, I'll open up to any questions you might have. Going on at construction sites, some people are seeing yeah. some crews out the Yeah, side. I'll tell you, as soon as this, these guys go by.
The question is, is, is what's going on at construction sites? Construction sites in the city of Boston, commercial su- construction sites are shut down. Both union and non-union are shut down. We are making sure that they have until this weekend to make sure any safety precautions on the job that have to be put in place, the work is, gets done. We allow them the opportunity to finish the week to get the, any safety that needs to be done. What, what I mean by that is on tall buildings, if they're open at the top, making sure that everything in that building is, is, is basically covered and, and, and tied down so that in case the wind comes through, it doesn't go off the building. We are allowing emergency construction, which means any construction going on in hospitals right now, that they're trying to make sure that hospital rooms being renovated, we're going to allow that work to go on because they're going to need the space. We're allowing any emergency construction work on the streets to go on. We're allowing any construction in private homes um, to continue to move forward. If, company, if, if, if private contractors want to do work in homes, they can do that. That doesn't mean building new homes, a 10-story building or, a t- I mean, a 10-apartment 10, 10, 10, um, 10 building. That means any renovations going in homes can continue forward. Um, the state, Massport, and the T have not followed. They have not d- taken the same path that I have taken here in the city of Boston. But I know in California, in, in parts of Pennsylvania, in Cambridge, and other parts of the country, they're taking, they're taking, uh, they're following our lead. Any emergency work that needs to be done in the city uh, on a project, whether it's a roof or something like that, uh, if you contact inspectional services, we will, we will grant the permit for emergency work. So anything that has to happen, if you have elevators that are in buildings that need emergency work, we'll allow building that to happen. But for all intents and purposes, um, construction work is closed down. The reason for it, the same reason why people are sending people home uh, to prevent the spread, spread of the coronavirus. The question is, uh, do I anticipate ordering the similar to New York uh, in order to stay home unless you're essential personnel? Uh, we have not done that yet here in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, but what we are asking people to do is it's our responsibility now. It's within our own grasp to stop the spread of this virus. We do it by social distancing. We do it by making sure physical distancing is not happening. We do it by not going into large groups. We do it by not bringing people in. We have to make sure, do everything we can to keep these numbers down. I've seen a lot of people, um, you know, stay home and work from work, work from home and not in Boston. But I still hear stories of people having gatherings at the house. That can't happen. That can't happen. All it takes is one person in that gathering to have uh, symptoms of the coronavirus, the carrier, and potentially impact everyone in that room. Uh, anticipating, I think at this point, uh, I think everything is on the table to be anticipated. I think we just, it's a day at a time. There's a large field hospital being built in the Seattle area. Uh, do you, is there any need for that here? And if so, where would you put this? Yeah, there's a qu- the question is, is there, um, there's being a large field hospital being built in Seattle, uh, and is there a need uh, in, in Boston or Massachusetts for that? Um, the answer to that, potentially. But what we've been identifying is sites that uh, could be used as converted into extra space, whether it's for a homeless population, whether it's for homeless families, whether it's for additional um, potential hospital hospital beds, if you will. Uh, we're working um, with the state right now on on, 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 on kind of cataloging the spaces available here in the city. Uh, and if need be, if we need to do that, we'll get it done. Yeah, we worked with garages. I mentioned it. Garages. Uh, we've had 12, gar- 12 um, garages have worked with us uh, to offer reduced rates, and, and sometimes some of those cases free. So we're working. We're doing that today. So we, when we put the call out this morning for that, um, this is about parking for medical personnel. We put the call out for that this morning, and we already have 12, 12 responses. And by the time I go up to the office, we might have more. I would just wonder, what's the biggest challenge that you're facing today? Is it with getting those masks? Is that why you've let it, you know, get in the mask room? I, I think I, I don't think you can I can give you one biggest challenge for the day I think in the different industries that we have there's different challenges I think in our medical industry it's making sure they have the proper um, 
proper equipment they need to do their job. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for all of us is, is, is making sure that we continue to, to, to try and buck this trend and change that curve. Um, and I think as I looked around the country and I was watching TV earlier, I think uh, Michigan went up by 400 percent in the last in the last couple of days uh, of, of people infected with the coronavirus. I think the biggest challenge is making sure that, that we are doing everything we can for the people of Boston. We're making sure that, that, that our families that are, that are um, in our underserved families and our low income families have the supplies they need. We're making sure that the seniors in our community have everything they need. When I say everything, whether it's food or medicine, we're making sure that we're making sure that uh, our schools, our kids have the materials they need. Uh, so there, there's not one top priority. Everything is a top priority. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on the phone uh, today. I've been on conference call after conference call after conference call and just trying to make sure that, that as we move down this road that we're, we're thinking and, and handling any situation that might arise. The question about the, the access capacity for hospitals, that's a big question, that's a big issue. That might not be as big of an issue today as it could be on Sunday. So it's about, it's about addressing all the needs that people have but also addressing the potential questions that might come Sunday. And what we don't want to do is get caught kind of not prepared for anything that comes our way. Uh, and I think that staying in close communication, sharing the best information we possibly can, all of those things are vitally important to moving forward. No, I, I have no symptoms, and, and you know, that, that when I saw that last week on TV about um, the, the president, what, did he have the virus or not, I think if, if I had the symptoms, if I came down with the symptoms, what I would do is I'd go home and, and, and self-quarantine myself. Um, I would contact my medical provider. I, I would contact the public health nurse. They would walk me through a situation to see if what the case was, and if need be, I would absolutely have the, the, take, have the test. Um, I don't think you waste the test on me if I don't need the test. Uh, but if I had the symptoms, obviously, I'd want the test. Uh, and I think that that's right now, I, I want to make sure the people, the tests are being available are for the people that need it, the people that are sick. Um, we want to make sure they have the test, because if they have the coronavirus, we want to be able to get them the, the help they can get. Yeah, I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, I, I think, I mean, we're, we're not at that point now. We'll get you in, I'll, I'll talk to you in a minute. I'll, we'll get you in a minute, all right? Yeah. Is that a good idea? I think it's a good idea. I think, I think it's an idea worth looking at. And I think that I had a conversation this morning with the state, and I think that, that to talk about this, uh, I think, you know, I was on a radio station earlier, and they asked me about uh, moratorium on rent, renters paying. And the difficulty with that is if you, if you own a home and, and your, rent, your renter stops paying and there's not moratorium for you on the mortgage, that makes it very difficult comp very difficult for you because you could lose your house. So I think it's absolutely worth looking at, and, and I think that uh, whether it's a stimulus package from the federal government or the state, we should be looking at that. Um, you know, we are two weeks into this right now, uh, and, you know, people in, 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 in 10 days, um, actually 11 days, um, rents are due, uh, generally. It's usually the first of the month. Um, many people are struggling right now about if they're not working, what do they do? Do they pay the rents, or do they hold the money for food? And I think that these are conversations that we need to have now. All right, thank you, everybody.